Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you guys are new to the channel, my name is Evan. If you guys are new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and consider liking this video. Today we'll be doing a coolant overhaul on my BMW E46. What's new? It's a BMW and it's a BMW E46. You guys know these cars leak coolant and oil and that's what we're fixing today. I have a coolant leak out of my radiator and I figured it'd be a great time to do some preventative cooling maintenance on my BMW just to ensure I never leak coolant and to ensure my car does not overheat. So let's take a look at the parts. So here are all the parts that I have. I have a new radiator, I have a new expansion tank, I have a new water pump, I have a new pulley. This bracket right here tends to leak and I also have a coolant temperature sensor which usually stops the fan from kicking on. All this stuff I picked up from FCP Euro. I absolutely love FCP Euro. You guys hear me talking about them all the time. FCP Euro offers a lifetime guarantee on all their parts. So when these parts go bad again, and they will go bad because it's an E46, I have a lifetime warranty on it. So guys, check them out in the link below. And thank you guys so much for watching, supporting the channel, because without the support of you guys, I wouldn't be able to work with these awesome companies like FCP Euro. So we're gonna start by taking apart the car. We're gonna take apart the air box, this top piece right here, and we gotta drain the coolant. So let's do all that and get to work. Got the last screw that I dropped. All right, carrying on. Now that we have everything out, we are going to work on removing the fan right here. There looks like there's a connector here and there's another connector for the actual fan. This is for some sort of sensor. I'm not sure what it does. And I believe it's just a pin right here. And there's a Torx bolt right here. So probably T25 and a little plastic pin. And this is a manual car and the fan will lift right up, which is super simple. I think we have a manual. If you have an automatic, you're gonna have to get the fan clutch tool, not a huge deal, but if you can convert to an automatic or electric fan rather on an E46, makes your life so much simpler. Before we drain the coolant, we are gonna undo the tensioner. But before we do the tensioner, we should just break these four bolts right here for the water pump pulley. Now the reason why is so it doesn't spin because the whole thing's gonna spin. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take out these four bolts and then down here, we're gonna pop off this cap and pull the belt off. I'm not gonna undo the full belt. I'm literally just gonna pull it out of its place right there. And then I should, be, I should have access for the water pump. Again, some cars are different, but I believe I have a Torx bolt in here. I gotta pop this cover off. Now, I would usually say to replace the bolts, belts and pulleys, but I've already done that within like a couple thousand miles. I mean, I've only put a couple thousand miles on this car since I've actually had it, even though I've had it for four years. I think I put six or 7,000 miles on it. So my pulleys are in excellent condition, but we are gonna replace the water pump, which sits right here. So let's undo these four. I believe they look like 10 millimeter bolts. We're not gonna undo them completely, just break them, and then we're gonna take off the belt. All right, well, they're out. I don't know if they're supposed to be that loose, but they were super loose. They were not torqued down at all. All right, let's get this pulley off. Well, it's kind of hard, so I didn't film it, but basically it's a T50, you put it on the pulley, and you just pull down on it. So I'll give you guys a look real quick of what it looks like, but it is time to drain the coolant. And you just put a T50 and pull down, and it release it, and then it just went over this piece and around around back there and it's super simple so let's drain the coolant now okay unfortunately i can't get my camera low enough but this will have to do so there's two blue screws they're plastic ones so be careful we're going to undo those and drain the coolant hopefully this bucket's big enough we're going to start with the radiator all right guys with the coolant drain we are going to start taking apart the Expansion tank, it's kind of a pain in the ass on this car, but what we're gonna do is there is clips, these metal clips that you just pull up on, and then we're gonna need some persuasion to pull out these lines. There's also a lower one halfway down the expansion tank that needs to be taken off. 
So you just pull up and then start wiggling it out. It is definitely not the easiest thing to do. Mine's been taken apart so it actually came out pretty easy but it may be a challenge. Now there is a clip at the bottom that we're going to have to undo. You just pull out on it. Literally just holds the expansion tank in. And then the other thing is the actual coolant sensor, which I'm gonna undo now. And then we can pull up on the, the expansion tank and the expansion tanks out. Now we should just be able to pull up on the expansion tank. If you pull hard enough, it will come out, but I definitely recommend getting a new bracket just in case, because it may break. And just wiggle it out. It's kind of a tight fit. Just like that, the old expansion tank is out. Save the clip though. You may not have a new clip. And save the sensor too. That's what the sensor looks like. You just do like a quarter of a turn and it will come out. Of course, mine got drenched trying to take it out, but. Okay, so with all that out, looks like we can move on to the radiator. Radiator in this bracket. There's a little bit of coolant still sitting in it. So there's two connections on each side for the actual radiator. It's kind of the same sort of setup as where as these top ones where you pull up on them and then they go in. So there's a lower one. There's a lower one on the left hand side and then we took the upper right one out and then there's one for this bracket right here. So I'm gonna undo those now. So we undid both of the Hose is going to the radiator. We actually had to undo it th from the thermostat up here. We couldn't undo the lower radiator hose where the coolant temperature sensor sits. So I was able to get that out, but I believe there's just one T25 bolt that's holding in the radiator. It sits right up top, right near where the expansion tank's at. Just undo that. And I believe the radiator is just gonna pull right out. All right, so to remove the water pump, it's these four 10 millimeter bolts that we previously undid. So now once the pulley's off, I just took a screwdriver, hitting it didn't work. Just take a screwdriver behind it, it's only plastic, it will come off. There is now four more bolts holding in the actual water pump, and we're gonna undo those now. Now, make sure that you cover the belts and put another bucket on there before trying to remove it. If you try to just pull out on it, chances are it's not going to come out. So to get the water pump out, like I mentioned, when you try pulling on it, nothing happens, but you'll see in the middle, there's two bolt holes. I know it's really hard for you to see, it's kind of tight. There's two bolt holes. And if you take your pulley bolts right here, they're actually M6 bolts, thread them back in, tighten it down one side, then the other back and forth. It will eventually push the water pump out. Make sure you have a bucket under the car to collect it because there is still some coolant in the engine. So let's try this and see what happens. I may. I did buy longer bolts just in case, but let's see if we can get away using the bolts that come on the car and then you guys will know that you don't actually have to buy new ones. I'm interested for myself to find this out. So here's my old water pump. Looks like it's already been replaced, but we're just replacing it again. And it has a metal impeller, which is really good. Make sure you get a water pump with a metal impeller. Do not go for the plastic ones. It's out, so now we can reassemble. All right, so to put the new water pump in, it sits like this. This circle piece right there is actually gonna be on the bottom and it will slide right in. And then we're gonna tighten it up in a cross pattern to kind of suck the water pump in and to make and ensure that it's going in straight. So one important thing to note, on the new radiator, I did get one of these brackets, but I didn't get this bottom bracket right here. So we need to swap this bottom bracket over.
now gonna attempt to slide the radiator in. I did put the belt and pulleys back on. Okay, with the radiator in, there's the small, the shorter T25 bolt that sits on the side of the expansion tank that we are going to thread in right now. Radiator's in, we just have to put both the hoses back in and that side's clipped in. Okay, so now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in a new temperature sensor for the coolant. Unfortunately, I broke my old coolant level sensor and me being stupid, I did not buy another one. So unfortunately we can't finish the job tonight. We can't fill it up. So right down in that hole is where the temperature sensor lives for the coolant. And a lot of the time people have issues on the E46 where the fan's not kicking in and it's because that sensor needs to be replaced. So I definitely recommend replacing that sensor. It sits in, I believe it only sits in one way. Yeah, it actually is keyed and you can see right there, there's a key on it. So. Pop that in, snaps in just like that, and grab the connector. Connector is also keyed, so it only goes in one way. And good to go. All right, everyone, so it's the next day. We're getting ready to put the expansion tank back in. Because I'm an idiot, I broke the old coolant sensor right here, and I stopped because I thought this was a wet seal, meaning it comes in contact with coolant but it actually doesn't what happens is this has its own this little hole right here for the sensor has its own cavity that sits up here and if you shine a light in there you'll see it and what happens is this piece right here actually has a magnet on it and the sensor is reading against the magnet stupid me didn't know that shout out to again street rocket joe he's a master bmw mechanic and i was talking to him last night and he let me know how the system works and he also let me know that it's essentially the windshield washer fluid sensor but the whole Point of the story is I could have drove with it. Yes, I wouldn't have known the level of my coolant, but that would have been okay because I would have watched my temperatures, making sure the car was not overheating. It's only a short trip home. But because I'm stupid, I didn't. But if you guys are looking to buy a new one, here's the part number. Again, I will have all the parts that I'm using linked down in the description for FCP Euro. I ended up, unfortunately, having to go to the dealer for this and got screwed over. I paid, I think, $35 for this one, FCP has it for 20 something for the OEM one. So definitely shows another point of why you should be using FCP Euro. And again, the sensor only goes in one way. There's a smaller nub over here and a bigger one there. So you can do this in the car. I'm just choosing to do it now, just like that. It's in, we're gonna put some grease on these two little fittings on the O-rings to help slide it in and then we'll push the sucker in. All right, so it's time to put the expansion tank in. Make sure you put this piece back on and have it pulled all the way out and move this out of the way, snake it down. And I believe it is in, obviously it is still rocking around a lot. I believe that's because two reasons. One, this piece actually holds it in, it kind of locks it in. When that's in, it allows it not to move. And um, it's not full of liquid, but I believe it's all the way seated. I'm gonna jump under the car and just double check. I feel it feels like it has no more to travel. Let's jump under the car and take a look. So I checked at the bottom. The expansion tank is mounted. I put in this connector. We just have to put this connector in and we have to put the fan in. So we're gonna actually throw the fan in right now. All right, one thing I didn't do and what we have to do before we put the fan on, the expansion tank's in. I have the lower coolant hose on. I do need to put the upper radiator hose on, but we do need to tighten down these pulleys. I did not tighten them down, so we're gonna tighten down the water pump pulley. Okay, with that tightened, we are now free to put in the fan. Just be mindful you have these two connectors. We already put the coolant temperature sensor in. That's nice and snug, not coming out, which is great. And we also have that bottom coolant line in for the radiator, so let's grab the fan and put it in. Just slide down. Okay. 
All right, the final thing before we start filling is just putting this coolant hose back on. Sometimes it's easier to take this piece off first. And then. Okay, we're gonna do one more check, but then we're gonna start filling it up. And what we're going to use to fill it up is BMW coolant. Now this stuff is not pre-mixed, so you will need to add a bottle of distilled water. So a gallon of BMW coolant to a gallon of distilled water. So we're gonna start filling it up. I don't have a way of mixing it. We're just gonna kinda half coolant, half water, half coolant, go back and forth, and then we'll go over the bleeding process. So now what we're going to do is you can see that this is full. We are going to turn the car to position two, have the heat on the max setting for the temperature and the fan on the lowest speed. And now what that's gonna do, it's gonna open up the thermostat and allow more coolant to flow through the engine and then we'll start bleeding. We're gonna have to turn the car on and we're gonna have to put the cover on and let all the air out of that little bleeder valve right there. And if you have not replaced this with a brass one, I don't know if you can see it, highly recommend it because the plastic ones strip. I'll have a link to Amazon to buy that. It's a simple mod. Well guys, I went to put back my air box and I just realized one thing, the BMW Performance air box actually covers up this little bleeder valve. So I can't even put it on. I guess we're gonna have to run it like this to bleed it. So let's clear this area and start the car and start the bleeding procedure. So right now I'm actually really towards the top. Like it looks like it's all the way full. I have the bleeder valve fully open and I'm just slowly pouring it in and it's coming down this pipe right here and falling, gravity's pulling it all the way down into the radiator to fill it up. So I'm just slowly pouring. And that's the exact reason why we want it in position two. So this thermostat is open. And if this is not happening, this could be another sign that your thermostat is stuck closed which if you are doing this job, replace, but mine already been replaced very recently, so I'm not gonna replace it again. And liquid just started flowing over the top of that little bleeder valve, so it looks like we're full. All right, everyone, so the car is back together. We bled the system, and there are no leaks, no nothing. It is still dripping some coolant, but I think that's just a little bit of the excess. The temperatures are good. Everything's good. I'm gonna take the car for a drive, but I'm closing out the video because everything is A-OK. -okay. The car, let the car run for about 15, 20 minutes. Nothing, I gave it some throttle. It's not overheating whatsoever. I'll continue to monitor their gauge for the next couple of days just to make sure we don't have a leak, but we look like we're all set. And if you guys are looking for parts, like I mentioned, FCP Aero is the place to go. They are far cheaper. As you guys saw earlier, I broke, a, I broke an old part and I, Needed it the next day, went to BMW, and I basically got screwed over for the price. So FCP is where you need to go for your BMW OEM, OE, and genuine BMW parts with a lifetime warranty on every single part. So I don't know why you guys aren't shopping on FCP Euro yet, but I'll leave a link down below for you guys to check them out. That is all I have for today's video. Give this video a huge thumbs up, consider subscribing, and also check out my other E46 content. We have a lot more E46 good content on its way. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Peace out.